Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Age. I'm Eric Miller and in today's video, I want to give you a layout update. I haven't basically shown you the layout or shown you around the layout since kind of the beginning of the year or late 2019 and um, things do move at a bit of a glacial pace around here. I don't have a ton of time. Um, even while we're um, working from home and all that, I just don't have a ton of time to get to layout projects. But I have made some progress and so I just wanted to show you around and um, show you what I've worked on in the last few months and what I'm going to work on in the near future and uh, just some interesting projects. So that's what we've got going on here today at the Stockyard Industrial Lead. So join me for a tour. So let's start here at the South Omaha Yard and we'll work our way to the Southwest. Um, the yard is pretty much the same, nothing much has changed here, but I wanted to show you a couple of things that I have been working on. Uh, one of them is these uh, OLMB ore cars right here. These are MTH ore cars and the OLMB had a lot of these for uh, basically shipping sand and gravel in and, and uh, some of them did venture into Omaha actually um, a lot of a lot of use they were used a lot for going from their main sand and gravel pit uh, between Omaha and Lincoln and a lot of them would go to Lincoln um, but some did go to Omaha now these are probably really either getting close to retirement or retired by my early 90s era but um, I wanted to model these because they did have some ore cars and the other ones that they had that were slightly newer, there's not really a good model for them. And there's decals for these, so I thought that would be cool. <clears throat> the other change is that now that I've got the Jeep 9, this Alco C415 is primarily going to be using transfer service. The Railcar America car shop in South Omaha is just north of here. And so they would transfer some things that come in from other railroads to the north, like the Chicago Northwestern and the BN, and then transfer it down here so that the Jeep 9 can take it to the customers further down south in South Omaha in Bellevue. And so that's going to be kind of a, an important distinction from now on. Um, as this kind of uh, this Alco now kind of has secondary status, if you will. Um, another change that I'm going to be working on is I want to replace this Union Pacific U23B with some modern power. Uh, the U23Bs, this is a form of Missouri Pacific, were retired by Union Pacific by 1990. And so I want to bring it up, move it up to the early 90s a little bit more. And so I'm going to replace that with the B23-7. And I would also like to model a uh, Union Pacific GP38-2, an original Rock Island one, uh, which is going to be a bit tricky because finding the right phase painted in UP is a little hard. Um, but so that's a, a project that you'll probably be seeing in the future. Um, so that's about all that's new in the yard. Another thing that I want to work on, though, speaking of the C415 and the transfers, is I want to work on getting more uh, transfers to and from the car shops. One of the things they specialized in was auto racks, so I was thinking of just getting some somewhat cheap Walther's auto racks, um, you know, like two or three of them, just to show some of that interchange happening. Um, that would go like between the Union Pacific to the yard here, because the UP mainline is right back here, and then to the car shops. Um, this warehouse here, Millard Refrigerated, is something new that I uh, built a couple months ago, you might recall, and then also this uh, plumbing supply building in front of it. Um, I basically used the, this plumbing supply building, used to have a spur that's now abandoned. You can kind of see it there. Let me move this up a little bit higher so you can see it. There we go. So it's kind of got some rusty old tracks there. Um, this scene I still have to finish, obviously, with the surface and adding some landscaping. Uh, but at least I have the structures done. So I find that structures are really helpful when people are spotting cars, just to have something, especially when it matches what's showing on the switch list and then what matches my uh, track diagrams there. And over here we've got the new GP9 and Caboose that I recently finished. So this is now the primary motive power on the Stockyard Industrial Lead. And this is what's going to basically power every local. And so um, you'll be seeing that on operations video for the most part. I might slip in the C415 every now and then. I could also use a Union Pacific locomotive if uh, the Jeep 9 and C415 need some maintenance. Um, this is a scene back here, the transload, that I want to get to in a few months. I recently did a Facebook poll to see what people 
would like to see me do next for a scene. And they didn't vote for this one. They voted for another one that I'll show you here at the end. Um, but this is one that I want to get to as kind of my first urban scene. And another building that I've recently worked on is this over here, Standard Distribution. Some of you may recall this used to be a cold storage um, facility, but I decided to change it to just a, a, a typical uh, distribution warehouse. And I added an extra door here, and, and this part of the building is new. And then I changed the spur track. I moved it over a little closer so that we can have uh, double loading and unloading for these cars. So you'll see they're lined up and you put a bridge plate in between the cars and you can um, load and unload the first or unload the first one, unload the second one, load that one and then load that one. Uh, typically what we see here is um, stuff coming in like like maybe some vegetables, um, some auto racks or auto parts, I'm sorry. And then shipping out will be some like recycled newsprint and then some uh, meat. And so I like having the inbound outbound exchange here. And then at the end, I used to have the grain elevator, which wasn't really prototypical for this part of South Omaha. So I decided to take it out. And so this is going to be a bread company that I'm trying to uh, roughly base it on some buildings that I, that I see in the South Omaha area. So that's the big change here. And again, uh, this isn't complete yet. I still have to work on the you know, landscaping and groundwork. Um, I definitely need a lot of work on this building here. Um, but it's kind of nice, again, to have, you know, at least you have the doors where you need to spot the cars. Um, you kind of have a rough building. So people that operate here, visitors, if I ever get visitors here again to operate, uh, besides my own family, they'll see, they'll know what to do. Uh, this is the big, the big thing uh, that I showed in the last update was the scenery here. Uh, this Bellevue neighborhood um, and going into Gemini Siding and Gemini Park, uh, which is part of the uh, kind of Air Force representation of the Bellevue area. And then back here, we've got our Bellevue industrial area, uh, which I really haven't done much with. Um, this was a fairly recent building that I, I just kind of roughed in the Bellevue Leader printing uh, press here. We've got cars that go inside the door there. Um, that was fairly recent, but again, I have to do a lot more with the parking lot and other other things. So I'll get to that eventually. Um, otherwise, this area back here with the pay less lumber yard is still pretty much the same. Um, I really need to fix this road here. This is um, I've I've kind of taken these roads from other places on the layout that I've changed. And this road changed because I used to have a track coming through here that I took out. And then I also actually used to have, a, a, you know, a couple years ago, I had the wall of the layout way back there. So that road had to be just taken out and redone. So eventually I want to get that looking a little bit nicer. I find that that having the roads like this, though, at least uh, the grade crossings really helps crews pay attention to. Yes, I need to I either need to flag this crossing or I need to blow the horn, that sort of thing, as, as opposed to um, just having it marked out. Um, or saying, hey, there's a road here, but you know, then the crews forget about it. So, so this still works well, it just doesn't look very nice. And here we've got the ready mix concrete plant. This I'm going to be working on a little bit in the future. Um, of, of course, you know, I kind of have this building. I want to add on to this building a little bit, make it a little bit larger um, because it does get a lot of volume shift in here. And I'm trying to decide if I want to get the Walters uh, Blue Star kit to add on to this, or if I just want to kind of uh, use some styrene or something to, to put another kind of tank in here. Um, and then the other thing I would like to do is extend the spur a little bit, um, because as you see, we've got this, this train here. Uh, this car uh, in the back cannot be unloaded. As you, as you can see there, it doesn't, um, doesn't make it to the unloader area. And so, but I, I like the, the, having the amount of cars in there and being able to serve that many cars, um, but I just need to extend the track. So I'm gonna take this track that I got from the, uh, where the grain elevator used to be over there, and I'm just gonna add this on a little bit. Um, over here is our massive tree farm. Uh, my two daughters did a really good job of helping me make trees over Christmas break. And I, was, I wanted some trees for the Bellevue neighborhood, and I was making the super tree kit from uh, Scenic Express, and you get a ton of trees in that. And I thought, you know what? I've got the glue made in, in tubs and everything together. I just want to make these trees so nothing dries out. 
And so um, now I'm left with a, a big tree farm. And so I've got, obviously the urban areas won't have a ton of trees in them. And so, but as I get to those areas, I can, I can pick out some trees here and use them. Uh, this area coming into the rural scene will have some, some more trees. So I'll be able to use more of those, uh, but those are all set and done. So this is going to be my next scene down here. This is going to be a farm scene. It's at the very end of the layout. You see here I've got the, the ties marking the end of the layout. Uh, the rails are pulled up here. The bridge is out of service. Um, it got wrecked in a flood. And so one of the questions is, why do I have this part of the layout if there's nothing here? Well, a big part of it is storage. Uh, underneath the layout, it kind of comes in handy. Um, I also just like having a rural scene showing that, hey, you know, this is kind of the end of the urban area. Uh, this is really where things things end and so and terminate. And I also like having a reason for the end of the layout with this um, this uh, bridge that that uh, broke. And, you know, when when it happened, the story goes is that, uh, um, you know, the railroad thought, well, should we fix it? No, we don't really have the volume passed here. A lot of our customers are in the urban area, so let's just get rid of it. And, and that's what happened. And so that was kind of um, early 80s, roughly, when that when I'm saying this happened. Um, this is the, I model this as the Papio Creek, which is in the Bellevue Papillion area. And then this will just kind of be your typical farm. I've already got some corn stalks that I've planted. Um, they were in another part of the layout before I tore that part of the layout down. So I'm going to, I want to kind of do something similar to this. Um, where, I, where I plant the corn here, I have a little bit of a field, and then this there will be a farmhouse and a grain silo and, and some of that stuff. So just, just kind of a little small representation of the farm area, the rural area that you get out to at the very end of the layout. So I kind of just like that as, I guess, a capstone of the layout, if you will. So this is what I'll be working on in the immediate future. And in between my other projects that I mentioned, the, the locomotive projects, one other thing I wanted to mention with the, the concrete plant way down here, I want to give them a little tiny switcher of their own. Uh, right now they use the loader for pushing the cars. Um, AHM made these little critter switchers, like two axle four wheel switchers um, that are kind of cool, but probably not worth running. And so I want to take one of those really cheap and just paint it up for the OLB and uh, give them a switcher. That would, that would be kind of fun. And then I'll just move it out of the way um, when it comes time to operate. But I just thought that would be kind of cool for them to have a little, a little critter there. So they're really the only customer that needs to have um, some movement of cars in between their service from the local. So, so it would kind of make sense for them to have something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it. Some scenery here and get to the transload area there and then um, the locomotive projects and uh, freight cars pretty much staying the same as I can tell. Um, that's about it really. So hopefully I'll get some more of that stuff done. And then after I finish these two scenes, I want to start ping ponging back and forth uh, with other urban scenes in the layout and start getting more stuff done there. Um, start getting some of these scenes like this uh, standard distribution where I've got the building done to just finish the scene up. So that would be great. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the, the grand tour back at the yard now. So thanks again for joining me on this quick little layout update. Um, I hope it was helpful to kind of show you a little bit of what what's going on with the layout and how things work around here and and you know just to kind of show you that yeah not everything happens super fast and and i kind of you know get a get a, an hour here or there maybe a few hours on a weekend and that's about it so um but i do have some plans and projects and so these are the things that uh, you can look forward to seeing when you're coming up uh, feel free to leave any comments if you have questions if you have suggestions for future videos you want to see i'm definitely opened up to it um, be sure to check out my facebook page um, which is Stockyard Industrial Lead on Facebook. Um, Facebook.com slash Stockyard Lead is the, the page I've got linked below. Um, I usually post there a few times a week and keep you updated with, with uh, progress. So if you're curious um, about the things that I'm working on, you can go to the Facebook page and see, see updates there. And I'm hoping to do some more live videos on Facebook 
Um, I might try some on YouTube as well. We'll see uh, where I can actually, you know, have you ask questions and I can answer them right away or show you some things on the layout. Um, but yeah, if there's something that you want to see, just let me know and I can get that video going for you. So thanks again for tuning in and I will catch you next time on the Stockyard Industrial Lead. Bam!